Rest. Okay, now I can hear. Can you guys hear me? Yes. That's a yes. Okay, thank you, everybody. Sorry, I was fighting the computer a little bit, but it's good to see you all. And can you guys see my screen here where it says, you know, I've got a PowerPoint up week one, January 20th, you guys can see? Yes, Professor. Perfect, thank you, everybody. So yeah, it's just about five o'clock, but I'll wait another minute or so. I know it's our first Zoom, first week, so we'll give people a little more time to get here. But we've got almost 19 people. This is a full class. I think we will have 30 or 32 students. So um, we'll, we'll see if we can get everybody here today. Hi, sir. Hi there. Sorry, Professor. <laughs> no, you, sir, Jeff, Professor, it's all good. Whatever, whatever works. Okay, thank you. Sure. And you can probably hear right when you come in that I do record our Zoom meetings. So if you do not want your face or your video on the screen or you don't want your voice, that's totally fine, okay? Um, the most important thing is that you feel comfortable, you feel safe, but I do record the Zoom meetings and uh, allow people, you know, if people are sick or people can't be here to watch them later. So I will remind you about this Okay, but just remember, just remember. Uh, excuse me, Professor. Sure. Uh, uh, Shamla, yes. Yeah, thank you. Can I uh, turn off my camera? Yeah, that's what I was just trying to say. If I was not clear, Shamla, that's what I was saying, right? I love to see your faces. I love to see uh, and talk <laughs> to be to uh, talk to you. But of course, if you don't feel comfortable or if it's, you know, of course, take care of yourself. Thank you so much. But if need, uh, I can turn on for the first uh, meeting for today. I mean, first Zoom. It's up to you, Shama. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. Yes, I see Jawed. Little... Thank you. Jawed, I see your little, uh, little yellow hand. What's up? Yeah, right, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for allowing us to be as your student. Uh, so we already have, um, I think I, I, I want to say that the once when I was uh, studying like ELCS 320 and uh, 315 with uh, Professor uh, Ivan, one day you were our yes. guest, if yes. you remember. I'm you. that person, but unfortunately I... something has happened with my camera. Uh, even right now, it's turned on. Uh, do you see me or no, I don't? No, no, I don't. Yeah, because when you uh, right now, right now I turn it on, but I don't know. Something is wrong. I will try to fix that. And I also really like to see my uh, classmates. And beside of that, they see my face. But unfortunately, something has happened with my camera, and I will try to fix that. All good. Yeah, All that's it. good. I appreciate it, Chawad. Not not a problem. Like I said, uh, it is great. When people have their video on, but uh, I'm not, I, it, you know, every teacher does things different, you know, but uh, right. for me, it's, it's, if you yeah, can, right. I like it, but I understand yeah. it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I will try to here. fix that issue. And after that, uh, so I will definitely turn it on. No problem. Thanks for, thanks for letting me know. Okay. Thank you, sir.
So I see a few other people coming in. Hamasa or Lena, and forgive me, I will I will learn to pronounce your names correctly here, but forgive me on the first day, just saying hello to people when they come in. Olena and Marwa and Nida and Dina. Uh, who else did I see? Shamsia, Beatriz. Hi. Abnam. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Hi, Professor. Dimitri's here. Victor's here. Hi, everybody. Alexandria is here. Good to see you all. Hello, Professor. All right. Good to see you too, sir. Thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> As we get into the <laughs> evening here. Um, well, we've got 22 out of 31 right now, but some other students might join our class. But because it's a short class, right? This is only a three unit class. We only get about an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm just, we're gonna go uh, if that's okay. And if other students come in later, that is that is absolutely fine. You can um, have the record, sir, so they can check the record and know what they missed. You, that is correct. That, that is why I do the recording, Shamsia. That is exactly correct. Uh, but here we are. I'll, I'll sort of uh, stop sharing just so you see uh, my, my face for a moment here really large. Hi, uh, I'm, my name is Jeff. Uh, I, uh, I'm the teacher for your Grammar 310 class. Uh, like you see in, in Zoom here, it says Professor Jeff. So my name is Jeff Moran. You can call me Jeff. You can call me Professor. You can call me Professor Jeff, Professor Moran. I don't care, whatever you want. Uh, oh, that's good. Many, that's a good point. I know many students think it's a little bit too American, maybe too California to just say, what's up, Jeff? Uh, so that's why you can do a little bit of both, right? Professor Jeff is fine for me. Uh, so just to say hello. And of course, I will get to know you and learn your names and, and learn how to pronounce and say your names correctly here with our first assignment in the class. Um, but for now, I just wanted to say hi and tell you my name. And now I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint so we can get started with class today. So today is... Uh, what, Thursday, January 20th, week one of the spring 2022 semester. Another another semester all online, everybody. Let's do it. People taking class in work, uh, in their car, uh, at home, uh, in their kids' bedroom. Let's go. Let's do it. So here's the plan for today on our first day. I've got a welcome activity, sort of, you know, first my, my welcome there just to say hello, and you're all very welcome. Then I've got an icebreaker activity, a way for you to talk to each other just for a little while and talk a little bit about grammar. Then, like you probably know, you know, the first day of a college class is kind of like a, a business day, right? We need to look at the Canvas website so you know where everything is. We will look at the syllabus so that you understand the rules and the organization and sort of what we will do in this class. And then we'll see how much time we have after that, we will see. But that is the plan for today. Now, uh, here at the beginning of class, uh, I am going to put you into uh, groups so that you can talk to each other. And it's not really like a grammar quiz, but I'm gonna ask you to look at two sentences for some grammar stuff today. Uh, and, and I just want to remind you or tell you all, uh, you know, when you are in your small groups, uh, there is no recording right? Um, you don't need to worry about um, your video or audio being recorded in small groups. So if you do want to turn your camera on when you talk to your classmates right now, just to say hello and talk for a minute, you can do that and it will not be recorded, okay? Just, just uh, info, information for you. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, I'm going to put you in groups of about five people. So there will be hopefully enough people with uh, video or, or who can talk so that you can talk to each other. First, just talk like normal people. You know, who are you? Uh, where are you from? Uh, what language do you speak? You can just do sort of basic introductions. And then I do want you to talk a little bit about this class, right? And, and we're going to sort of do a preview for the, the way that I like to teach this class. So first, I want you to talk to your group about what is something specific you want to learn this semester. Remember, grammar is not specific. You will learn grammar, but what do you want to improve? Pronouns, prepositions, articles, verb tenses, right? Is there some part of English grammar that is really tricky for you? 
you'll hear me talk about my experience learning another language. I speak English and Spanish, and I've lived in Mexico. I've lived in Colombia. I speak Spanish pretty well, but indirect object pronouns are still sometimes hard for me, right? So that's a specific example of a, of a part of grammar that I'd like to improve. So if there's something specific that you know you want to practice this semester, uh, please share that with your class. And then I've got some grammar examples for you to talk about with your classmates here. So number two, what is the subject in this sentence? And here's the sentence, the big orange flowers in the backyard are beautiful. Don't say it, share it with your group. And number three, which of these two sentences is correct? Only one is correct. One, I had graduated from college before I bought my first house, or I have graduated from college before I bought my first house, okay? Uh, take a picture of the screen, maybe, or write it down, take a note. I will broadcast these uh, example sentences into your groups, but if you take a picture or write it down, it might be easier for you to remember, okay? So uh, introduce yourselves, talk to each other, just who are you, you know, where are you from, what language do you speak, do you live in Folsom, do you live in Sacramento, do you live whatever, and then talk about these three questions, right? A specific goal, and then what's the subject in the big orange flowers in the backyard are beautiful, and which is correct. I had graduated from college before I bought my first house, or I have graduated from college before I bought my first house. All right, I am going to put you into groups so that you can talk to each other for a few moments. And like I said, I will, uh, I will send these example sentences so all the groups can look at it, okay? So the breakout rooms are opening now. Uh, because our class is so short, maybe only about 10 minutes, okay, or, or less, we'll see. So rooms are open now, and I'll see you all in about 10 minutes.
Hello. Did you guys get kicked out or computer problems? Or are you just done? No, we're done. Okay. Give me another few minutes. You can just mute yourself. I'll bring everybody back in a moment. Hi, Helen. We're in small groups right now, but everyone will come back in just a few minutes. So just uh, sit with us in the big room. Okay, Helen? Okay. Hello, Professor. This is Maria. Sorry, I want to change the name. Oh, no. No problem. No problem. Thank you. Recording in progress. Progress. <laughs> Piano practice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, almost everybody is back. Room five maybe is still talking about the what's the subject, you know, but they'll be back here in a moment. Recording in. There we go. All right, I know it is not a lot of time, but hopefully it's nice to at least talk to some classmates. We will not do a lot of small group uh, breakout rooms like that in this class because it's only an hour and 20 minute class, right? Three unit class. So a lot of the class will be us working together in the big room. But I do wanna make sure you meet at least two or three or four other people. And I always, uh, I always, I'll stop uh, sharing. I always tell students, remember, even though we have done this now for three semesters, you know, three and a half semesters, uh, it is easy to feel like you are alone in your house or your office doing this class. But I promise, right, there are other people in this class. We are a group, right? We are a little online community. So at least you get to know, you know, it's not just you in your, in your, you know, in your kid's bedroom doing grammar. There are other human beings here with us. 
So, okay. Um, I know it's fast, but at least you got to talk a little bit. So I will answer both of these questions uh, in a second here. I promise we will talk about a little bit of grammar here. Uh, but first, I'd love to hear anybody who wants to share uh, what were some of your goals, right? What were some of the specific grammar things that you want to learn? Because when you look at the syllabus, right, uh, the school will tell me, Jeff, it's your job to teach the students X, Y, and Z, you know, these specific things. But, you know, we also have power, right? We can focus and, and practice the things that are most important to us as a class. Um, so anybody, I'd love to hear from two, three, four people. Uh, yeah, perfect. I see Sabnam, go ahead. What's a, a specific goal or what you want to learn? Uh, my goal is here, uh, like I would like to learn more way to improve my punctuation and uh, spelling. Mm. Punctuation is interesting. I can promise you, you will learn and improve with commas. We will talk about commas in this class. Because in a lot of other classes, a teacher might say, oh, commas are about sort of formatting, right? Or if you've yes. done 315 MLA, this is not true. Commas are connected to phrases and clauses, and that means grammar. So we will definitely talk about commas, maybe too much, but we will definitely <laughs> talk about commas. We will definitely talk about commas, Shabnam. Thank you so much. Uh, anybody else, you can unmute yourself or just type in the chat, whatever is easy for you, but I'd love to hear other goals people have. I would like to uh, uh, learn uh, tense in English, especially uh, present, perfect and present, perfect continuous. Ah, uh, yes. It's hard for me. Yeah, yeah, present. And I'm sorry, did you say present perfect and present perfect continuous as well? Yes. Yes. I have been studying English. Mm -hmm. well, good news, Elena. That's where we start. The first verb tense we look at is that present perfect tense. And then we'll get you ready for some of the, the more difficult ones. So thank you, Elena. Thank you. I can be uh, uh, yeah, yes, please go ahead. I see Jawed's little yellow hand. And anybody else, please go ahead. Okay. Yes, please. Could you please uh, add a past perfect to to this to the last sentence? Yeah, that's what we were looking at in my example sentence, right? <laughs> yes. So we want to learn about the infinitives. Mm. Your own sentence infinitives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Everyone's favorite topic. Yeah, uh, we will definitely talk about infinitives and we'll talk about the gerund a little bit. But but um, yeah, we will talk about that. But mostly I, I will I will encourage you all. Um, I don't even like students to think about gerunds and infinitives together. And I will tell you why uh, gerunds aren't verbs. They look like verbs, but they're not verbs. Once you know whether you are using a verb or a noun in your sentence, which is why we start with a review of parts of speech in this class, uh, you won't need to worry about ing or infinitive, right? If it's a gerund, it's a noun. Nouns go where subjects and, and objects go, right? Nouns don't go where verbs go. So we will talk about this, but I'll ask you to, to think about this a little bit differently as well. Um, yeah, infinitives. We could talk about infinitives for like two months, you know, that, that gets tricky. Uh, I'm just going to check in the chat. And Jawad, I see your hand, please. Uh, yeah, Jawad, that's will you uh, go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, so my, uh, as my classmate, uh, classmates mentioned, my difficulty and problem is also the same. The tense is like a past uh, progressive continuous tense yeah. or uh, present progressive continuous tense or these tenses. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, I would like to improve, and I, I'm looking in the chat now, some students were saying about subject and object. Very good news now, there, that's where we start. Uh, and then I also see in the chat, I would like to improve word order, um, sequence of word order, yeah, yeah. Um, especially I know for so many of, uh, this is true for all students, but of course for my, 
Russian speakers, Ukrainian students, or anyone from, from the Russian language family tree uh, in Russian, I know that the word order is important, but it's not very important. In English, you know, it's very, very, very important. Word order is very important. So we will definitely talk about that when we talk about parts of speech, right? Because word order has to be subject, verb, object. That means noun, verb, noun, right? Uh, and adjectives, for example, they almost always go before the noun that they describe, right? The only words in English that can kind of move wherever they want are adverbs. And that's why they're hard because they move. Um, okay, do I see anybody else? I've got time for maybe one, two, three more people. We're going pretty fast here, but anybody yes. else? Yes, please. Um, I want to, besides the past perfect, present perfect, all that, I always have problems. I also have problems with prepositions too. Yeah. 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 Uh, Barbara, yeah, I could not agree more. I can give you lots of good news in this class, right? I can give you lots of good news about uh, rules or tricks or, or a strategy, but my only bad news is uh, prepositions. They're so hard. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll help you practice, but uh, prepositions are hard for any speaker of any language. You know, um, almost always prepositions are almost like, um, they're almost like idioms, right? Because certain prepositions go together with certain nouns and certain verbs. It's not like there's one perfect way, right? Because I could say in the house, by the house, on the house, near the house, under the, I mean, it, it gets pretty tricky. It gets pretty tricky, but we'll practice, Barbara. I practice, uh, I promise. Um, but it's the same thing. And again, like I said, I'm pretty good in Spanish, but I still make preposition mistakes in Spanish because prepositions are hard in every language. Um, anybody else? We got a good list so far. One more person, I'll wait. Uh, we would like to learn about the eight verbs and verbs of what more like. Where verb tense, verb, ten. yeah, verb tenses, yeah. And uh, I see a comment in the chat from Katie too. I would like to improve my verb tenses. Yeah, yeah. I know that on the syllabus, and we talk about twelve verb tenses. We will we'll look at some of them. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. But just so everybody knows, you know, we will not spend too much time with the future perfect progressive. Right? It's interesting but it's not very important. Um, by this time next year, I will have been studying. Okay, uh, we'll look at it, but again, we're gonna look much more closely at that present perfect, present perfect progressive, past perfect and past perfect progressive, right? Yeah. For the 310 level, those are, are, in my opinion, right, really the most important verb tenses. And why? Because those are the verb tenses that you will see in your college level reading, you know, and it's what you will be expected to use in college level writing, right? It's almost impossible to write a, a college essay or a research paper without being comfortable uh, with the present perfect right. and the past perfect, right? That's, that's pretty important for college writing, so... Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Beatrice is like, yeah, man. Uh, all right. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Um, I, I always say this, too. I'll, I'll, I'll make my face big, not to scare you. Uh, but I do this at the beginning of class for a couple reasons. One, help you think about your own goals, right? Help you think about your own plans for yourself. This is such an important part of advanced learning of any kind, but especially for language learning, right? Like if you know the thing you want to improve, you are much more likely to improve it. Second, uh, this list, you know, can continue. If you feel like, Jeff, I want more practice or I need some more, I need to understand uh, subjects and objects better, bring it up in class, send me an email, right? Come to office hours. This is our class. We can focus on and do the things that we want together, right? If you met me in the lab or I've worked with you in another class, I've seen like, I know some students from the lab like Katie and Barbara and I've seen some of you guys, um, 
I am not the type of teacher who's like, I am the only one who knows what to teach and you have to do exactly what I tell you. Uh, sometimes I'll be like that, but I really think the most important thing for language learning is that we, we kind of have to do it together, you know? So, so that's why we, we start with this short activity um, together. So anyway, now speaking of short activities, oh, oh, let's talk about it. What is the subject? In this sentence, the big orange flowers in the backyard are beautiful. What's the subject here? I don't think flowers. flowers. But, and you can type in the chat or you can just say out loud. Good. I heard a few people say flowers. Good. So let's say, so if we say this is the subject here, actually, I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this green. If we say that this is the subject, Good, now I see Katie in the chat saying, the big orange flowers in the backyard. I see Lydia saying orange. I see Odlina in the chat saying flowers. Mariam says flowers. Okay, okay. Now, where's the verb in this sentence? Uh, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, don't think too hard. We'll, we'll talk about <laughs> subject, verb, object, but hopefully by 310, we kind of know where the verb is, right? Good. Okay, so remember, if English is subject, verb, object, that means the subject must, has to, will always come before the verb, right? So here's our challenge. If the word flowers is, well, and let me ask you this too. What part of speech, let's say noun, verb, adjective, let's just say noun or adjective. What part of speech are subjects in English? No. Thank you. Good. And in, in all of the words before the verb, the big orange flowers in the backyard, how many nouns do we have? One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. I heard two. I heard two. I heard three. I heard two. four. I will tell you. I will just identify for us. There's only two nouns. And don't Thank worry, you. I know Orange. I'm going, I know I'm going fast. If you thought it was three or four, don't worry. Next week, we're gonna spend the whole class on real grammar stuff, but this is going fast so that we can get to the syllabus. We've only got two nouns here, right? So one of them must be the subject, right? One of them must be the subject. How do we know it's flowers? How can we know, right? How do we know? Because the, um, the adjective defined the flowers, so flowers are beautiful. Okay, oh, I love that. So Nita is making me happy already. Okay, so Nita goes to after the verb are, we have what part of speech, Nita? The, it's adjective. adjective. Yes, yes, it is. And again, we'll talk more about this. I thought that in Grammar 51, we learned adjectives come before the nouns they modify. What's going on here? Here we have an adjective after the subject. We'll talk about that next week. But Nita is saying, okay, the adjective in this case, after the linking verb are, modifies flowers. So that means it must be the subject. That's a very good argument, Nita. I like that. That's very good proof for Thank your you. idea. Yeah, I really like that. Anybody else have an idea? I, I can tell you one more. How and let me ask this, and not just Nita, anybody here. There's another reason that backyard cannot be the subject. Does anyone know what it is? Quotation. A quotation. Okay, anybody else? Location. Location. You want to say where, more about that? Where, where the uh, flowers is located. Okay, uh, 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 good. Now I'm thinking of Beatrice's point. Yes, location. So what do we have here? What part of speech is in? Is proposition? Yes, it is. Place. That's right. And we'll, again, I'm going very fast, everybody. You'll get to practice this a lot more next week. But backyard cannot be a subject because it is the object of a preposition. Right? In the backyard. And again, I'll say this only one more time. I, I just don't want, I don't want anyone to get scared. I'm going very quickly here, but in the backyard is a prepositional phrase. A prepositional phrase is made of a preposition and an object noun. In this case, in is the preposition, 
the is an article and backyard is a noun. So the backyard is the object noun phrase to the preposition in. Now, again, we're going to talk a lot about phrases and clauses in the next few weeks. Uh, so you'll get much more practice with this. But this short example of thinking about parts of speech in this way is how we're going to start this semester. Because so many times I have students who came from grammar 50 level and what we study there is verb tenses, which is so important. It's really, really important. I want to be clear, but you can use the perfect verb tense and still have subject verb object mistakes, still have word order mistakes, right? Still have big problems in your sentence. So this class, we will look at verbs but we're not only gonna look at verbs, uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> now, I'm gonna say one more thing. In the chat, Katie said, the big orange flower in the backyard is the, is the subject, this whole subject. But I'm gonna say, maybe it is, maybe it's not, but I think it's really important that Katie understands the big orange flowers in the backyard this goes together, right? This is like a group of words that, that, we, that sticks together, right? This goes together. And we absolutely could call this whole thing together the subject noun phrase. I'm just curious, my people on video, give me a thumbs up or you can put it my, the, the little yellow thumbs up. Have you guys studied noun phrases and verb phrases? Have you ever talked about this stuff before, a noun phrase? Oh, yes. Quiet. Sir, like... Okay, <laughs> I see. I see a thumbs down. I heard Nita say yes. That's good. And and again, this isn't a test, you guys. It's it's really me trying to figure out. Okay, how fast should we go at, at the beginning? How slow should we go? Um, so Nita says yes, but everybody else maybe. Barbara, do I see you have a, an idea? Oh uh, no, sorry. Okay, let me, let me see. No, no problem. no problem. Yes, sir. Like in some phrases, we have like in some sentence, we have two words nouns like Sara and Neda, for example, are friends. So the two are nouns, no? Yes, that's an again, Nita, you're going to be like my TA for this class if you already understand. Yeah. So uh, a noun, a one word noun by itself, maybe we could say that is a noun phrase. But where so I like that idea. But remember, we also have in the backyard. And I already said that in the backyard is a prepositional phrase. Right. And the thing that I want you to start thinking about sentences differently, how sentences go together like a puzzle piece in English, and this is true in all languages, when you analyze the structure of a sentence, but phrases, groups of words, can make a phrase or a clause, and they go together. We use them, like, a, like I said, like a puzzle piece to sort of build the whole sentence, right? So in this case, when Katie says the big orange flowers in the backyard is the subject, she's not exactly wrong, because I would say that whole group of words is the subject noun phrase, and then the, the, the boss, right, the, the head, the most important noun in that noun phrase is the true one word subject, right? If you only can choose one word for the subject, it is, it is flowers, right? But again, it gets more interesting because even inside of that noun phrase, I've got the prepositional phrase in the backyard. Now, again, if you're looking at this thinking, oh, oh my God, um, don't worry. That's what we're going to, we're, we're, I, I promise, three weeks from now, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I know how to identify prepositional phrases and how to find the object noun phrase in a prepositional phrase. Uh, that's where we get started with this class. Any questions about this sentence before we look at the verb tenses? No. Cool. No. Yeah, this is and this is like at the main at the restaurant, you know, if you go to a restaurant and you get like an appetizer, this is this is my little appetizer for how we how we talk about grammar in this class. OK, before we before we go to the syllabus. So next one, which is correct and why I had graduated from college before I bought my first house and I have graduated from college before I bought my first house, which is correct. The first one, the first second, first one. second one, second one. Yes, the yes, one. Yes. First one. You know it's a good. You know it's a good test question when like half the group says number one 
and half the group says number two. That's that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> In the chat, I see number one, number two, number two. I'll tell you right now, it's number one. It is number one. Now, and I see some people are very happy that they were correct. That is excellent. Now, before, again, we're going to talk about this in much more detail soon, so I don't want to spend all day with it, but let me ask this question. Graduated from college, bought my first house. When did these, we have two things, right? Two events, two moments in time. When did they happen, past, present, or future? Past. 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 Both of them or only one of them? Both of them. Good. Yes. That's correct. Both of these events, and I'm going to say graduate by house, happened in the past, right? Now, which one happened, and, and let me ask this one, since we've got that have and that had, we've got that perfect tense stuff going on, are they still continuing into the present moment, or are they completed? They're completed. Right, because we're not talking about an ever question. I'm not saying, have you ever visited uh, Disneyland, right? Then you could say, yes, I have, right? That's a, that's a generally true statement. I'm talking about things that happen and are done. You graduate, right? Graduation's one day and then it's done, right? And you buy your house and it's done. You're not buying your house for a month. You know, you, you sign the paper, you write a check, whatever, whatever. You will be paying the mortgage maybe, but you know, you buy and it's done, right? You buy and it's done. So both of these events are fully completed. Now, the last question I want to ask you all is which happened first, buy house or graduate? Graduate. Graduate. Do you agree? Yeah, before. Yep, yeah, that's correct. Because before. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Now, the reason that sentence number one, and I'm going to cross this out, is the reason that sentence number one is correct is because we use the past perfect to talk about two events fully completed in the past. We use the past perfect in the clause with the event that happened first. Now again, we're going to see this in much more detail. I always talk fast. Forgive me. I'm going very fast right now. But this is the basic rule for the past perfect, right? When we have two events, both happened in the past and both are fully completed. The way that we make this clear to people in English is we use the past perfect tense. And then notice what tense do we use here for bought? Past. Past tense. Yep. Simple past. past. Tense. Simple, simple yeah. past, right? So when we when we do start to talk about verb tenses, when we do look at the past perfect and the past perfect progressive. This is the basic rule that we're going to practice. Now, I can make it seem very easy right now, but of course, it's not this easy. It's very tricky sometimes, especially when we're writing our own sentences, right? But this is a good example. Hopefully, this little short example will help you sort of see, again, one, how do I like to teach grammar? Always in a full sentence. I do not like fill in the blanks. That's not how we actually talk and we write. Right, that's not how we use grammar. Secondly, it's to make sure that we understand why we use the verb tenses we do. This is my big obsession, you know, as a teacher is anybody can memorize ed, 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 ed. But the real hard thing is to know, well, when do I use the past, the simple past, and when do I use present perfect? When do I use past? I mean, that's the hard part, right? When and why? Way. Right? That's, that's uh, who's talking? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> all right. 
Uh, now, I, um, hopefully you can tell, I really do love talking about grammar. Like I, I really love this stuff. Uh, I think it's fun and interesting and exciting, but I do have sort of a boring but important stuff to show you about the class. But before I go to the syllabus and sort of the less interactive part of this class, are there any questions at all that I can answer for you about these two short examples? About yeah, the I have a question. Yeah. Dimitri, yeah, can, can yeah, can you give me an example for a uh, present perfect in our situation? Sure, please. Yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, can you give an example for for our situation in present perfect? Um, just any sentence or something like. Yeah, this? I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, why? Uh, so, if it was a present perfect, how it should look like this well, sentence? Well, that's an interesting question, Dimitri, but remember, we can't, we have two events that both happened in the past and are fully completed. So mm -hmm. in that case, we can't use the present perfect, right? Like, oh, I mean, use... I mean, I mean, the present perfect we use when the only one uh, thing yeah. ha uh, happened in the past. Yeah. Can you say I graduate? from college before That's I it. bought my first house instead uh, to you use say it? it. Say it again. So instead to say I had graduated college before I bought my first house, can okay. you say I graduate from college yeah. before I bought my first house? Now you're asking an excellent question. And again, I think Beatriz, I'm gonna guess Spanish speaker, right? Uh, I'm gonna guess. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, in Spanish, you probably just you would use preterito for both of these, right? And and um, you 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 wouldn't need to say you know um, había graduado. You know what I mean? You wouldn't need to use a really advanced verb form. You can just use the simple past. And I'll say this: the short mm -hmm. answer, Beatriz, is when you're speaking, yes, right. This is very normal. I graduated from college before I bought my first house, but. If you want to get a degree at university in the United States, right? If you're writing a 10 page research paper, you want to make sure that you don't just use the simple past tense and okay. native English speakers will sort of, especially in writing Beatriz, will expect these more advanced verb forms, the higher up you go at university. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Um, anybody else, Jawed, I see a hand. Yeah, my question is, sir, that uh, so both action has happened in the past. Yes. So can we bring like a, a bot in a state of graduate and graduate uh, to the bot? Like, uh, can we do that? Like, uh, why we, uh, like, uh, can we switch the location of these two actions? Uh -huh. Now you're talking about switching the clauses. So before yes. I bought my first house, comma, I had graduated from college. Yes. The short answer is yes. We will look at this when we focus on clauses and sentence making. But yeah, you can move the clause order, but you can't change the verb tense, right? You cannot say I I graduated college before. You can't change you can't change the verb tenses, but you can move the whole clause. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 yeah right. Excellent. And again, we'll we'll get more detail about this in the next couple of weeks. Here. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, please. So just for the clarification, so uh, so when you are talking about just one thing that's already completed, you say I have graduated from college. But it it, dep it depends because you could say I graduated from college in 2015, right? That this is again, uh, this is uh, it's a good, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, Sam. I'm sorry, but um, it just depends on what you are trying to say, right? Because this is the way I want us to think about grammar in this class: is what am I trying to say instead of what do I need to say? You know, um, if you're if someone is asking you, when did you graduate? Oh, I graduated in 2012, right? But if someone's asking you, have you ever graduated from university? That's, they're asking you a question, again, present perfect tense, that ever word, I'm gonna add ever because that's a big, big clue here, right? Have you ever is sort of asking from the day you were born, right? Starting in the past, continuing up now into the present moment, 
have you ever? So those are two different sort of situations, two different examples. And for one, you'd use simple past. I graduated in 2012. Or have you ever? Yes, I have. So both might be correct for some. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's why grammar is so fun and exciting, but so hard. Because uh, if I could give you, you know, there's only one way to use the language, I would give it to you. Uh, but it's usually not that simple, you know, usually not that simple. Uh, anybody else? Uh, professor, I think uh, you you have to change the uh, switch the ever on you to. Yes, I put it to, I put it before, I put it too early. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's an adverb that cannot move around the sentence, huh? Um, yeah, the word order is important for that adverb. So uh, uh, this was like Dimitri's question, but this is, when I look at this example, Dimitri, this is how I would sort of think about, okay, present perfect with the verb graduate, right? Have you ever graduated from college? Have you ever studied English? Have you ever bought a house? You know, something like this, right? So, uh, so the... We use the pre the past perfect when we talk about the two or more uh, things happen in the future or oh, in, in the past. You got it. That's the okay. that's the basic rule, right? Two things okay. fully completed, totally done. Both happened in the past, and I want to make it clear to the listener or to the reader, if I'm speaking or writing, which one happened first, right? That's why we use the past perfect in English. Okay, I got yeah. it. Thank you. Cool. All right. Now I'm going to go fast through the boring stuff. We've got 25 minutes. I can do it. So next week, we'll do more grammar stuff, right? We'll, we'll start to practice. Uh, we'll, 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 uh, we'll look at parts of speech and phrases and sentence construction. But I'm going to go a little bit fast here to sort of explain the structure and the organization of this class and show you what's in Canvas for you to do right now. And then hopefully... I'll have time for questions or maybe you can, we can end a little early. We'll see how it goes. So first, if you saw the syllabus, uh, maybe you already know that this class is a little bit different, right? Um, with everything online now, different teachers do this different ways, right? Uh, Zoom two days a week, Zoom no days a week. You must have your camera on. Uh, what You don't need whatever, right? Uh, we have a lot of choices. So here is how I design this class. So this class is designed with something called flexible course design. And I'm just gonna read here to make sure this is clear. Uh, flexible course design is something teachers are experimenting with to help students during the COVID-19 pandemic. The idea is to allow students to complete the course at their own speed and at the days and times that work best for their personal schedule. This is why almost none of the lessons I should add there are a few that do have due dates, but this is why almost none of the lessons in our class have due dates. This is also why there's no strict attendance and you do not get or lose points for coming to our, excuse me, lots of mistakes by Jeff, for Thursday Zoom meetings, right? Now, there will be a couple big grammar projects that have due dates for the first draft, but if something has a due date, I will always give you at least two weeks notice, okay? I won't surprise you or scare you with a surprise test or surprise due dates, okay? So that's what I mean in the syllabus when I say flexible course design. It means I don't take attendance. It means we don't have due dates for lessons. So if you get sick, if your kid gets sick, if work gets crazy and you need to take a week to go slow or, or you know get behind or whatever, don't worry about it. You won't lose points. You can just do the work when you have time, right? And if one week is easy and slow and relaxed and life is, oh, everything is wonderful, uh, <laughs> it's possible, inshallah, uh, then you can go faster, right? You can do more lessons if you want, okay? So it just, it just depends. I have a question. Please. About, what about those days? Because Tuesday. over there you are saying that you do not get or lose points for Thursday Zoom meetings. Correct. Correct. Now I'm gonna now perfect transition, Beatrice, because now I'm gonna look at I'm gonna take us on a tour of the of the of the uh, 
Canvas site and of the syllabus. So let's go to the syllabus real quick. Actually, I think I have it open here. So again, I'm on the home page for people who are watching the recording, right? I'm on the home page here. And if you scroll down to this part that says links, you can see the course syllabus. You can preview it or download it. And if you scroll down, I'm just going to mute a few people. I can hear my own robot echo here. Preview it, download it. Okay, I think, okay, sorry. When I hear my own voice in the background, it makes me crazy, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so you can download the syllabus and I'm gonna open it right here. Okay, so let's go straight to Beatrice's question. If I go down to the bottom and this is on page three, I'll ask you to read this soon anyway. But if you notice here where it says, uh, uh, Professor Jeff's weekly Zoom meeting, right? So every Thursday, 5 to 6.20, I will host a Zoom class meeting. I will have short activities and examples to help explain ideas from the week's unit and answer questions you have about the assignments. However, I really hope that you come to these meetings with specific questions for us to talk about together. All of these Zoom meetings will be recorded and posted in Canvas. And as I've said, if you are not comfortable being recorded, you can turn off your audio and video and if you're unable to attend these Zoom meetings, you can simply watch the recordings. Again, you will not receive or lose points for attending these Zoom meetings, but I do expect that you will watch the video for any Zoom meetings that you miss. In short, you are responsible for all of the information. So now Beatrice was saying, okay, so what about Tuesday? On Tuesday, that is time in a perfect world for you to be able to do some of the homework and the lessons for this class and I have recorded a bunch of videos and explanations that sort of help you walk through the textbook. So my dream is you have an extra hour to do homework or review the material for this class. So if you go here where it says links, if you go to Professor Jeff's course materials, click this link, you will see uh, some, not even all of the videos that I have made for you guys so that if you need time to watch these videos, as I explain the textbook, right, you can do that on Tuesdays, right? And I'll also talk about some of the available student office hours or times that you can come talk to me. So if you do have questions or if you're thinking, oh, I might need more time to understand uh, uh, the lessons, that's totally fine, right? We can work together. There's videos here for you, but let me just show you an example. So uh, next week, I'm going to assign the first grammar lesson in Canvas, and I'm going to say, watch Language Power Tutorial 1, Parts of Speech. Here's the video. So for I've you. got my essay written, and I've been working on it for... Sorry, if I could... I don't make money from these ads. I just want it to be on record. These are not my ads. Okay, we're skipping this. Yes. Parts of speech must so be analyzed even, uh, within a sentence or a longer passage. You can see here, what I'm doing here is this is just chapter one of language power. We'll talk about the book in a moment here, but it's, you know, it's a 30 minute video where I go through the text, read it out loud for you, give you examples and try to make things clear, right? So uh, those Tuesdays, like I said, is, is a time for you to do the lessons, prepare questions, come to, come to Zoom on Thursday so that we can really practice some of, the, some of the new things that we are learning together, right? So one live Zoom a week, it's on Thursdays. Tuesday is, is your time, right? Tuesday is your time. Now, Tuesday is your time, but again, if you want more time with me, heaven forbid, or if you just want more time to practice, uh, down at the bottom of the homepage on Canvas here, I've got information about student office hours. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so it's bigger, much better. So my student office hours are Tuesday, 5 to 6.30. <laughs> and then I also have office hours on Wednesday from 10.15 a.m. to 12.15 and Thursday right before this class. So if you want to talk to me or ask questions before this class starts, you can come see me on Thursday. Now I do want to show, notice here it says appointments and drop-ins, appointments and drop-ins. So uh, underneath this student office hours link, right, there's two, there's two links, the office hours Zoom room. So if you're going to come see me at five o'clock on Tuesday, all you need to do is click this link right here. Okay, that's the link to come see me at office hours. 
And if you know you want to come at a specific time, you can click this link that says student office hours appointment sign up. And here I've got a sign up sheet where you could just, let's say that Beatrice wants to come. You don't have to, of course, Beatrice. Uh, but Beatrice is going to come. She's in G310. And now I know, okay, from 5 to 515 at least, okay, I'm going to get to work with Beatrice. Right? And this is true for anybody in all my classes. So that's why here where it says class, um, I will know all of your names in a couple of weeks. But just, you know, if it's week one or week two and you're going to come see me next Tuesday, all you need to do is put your name in here and just let me know that you're in G310 so that I am ready to help you when you come to office hours, okay? So that's what this student office hours stuff is down here. The Zoom room link to come talk to me and the appointment sheet to sign up. Now I'll, I'll, I'll allow questions in a second here, but again, uh, you can always also, just because those are my specific office hours, that does not mean it's the only time I can ever speak to you, right? If you need to meet at another time or if you have a question, you can send me an email. My email address is right here at the very top of our homepage in Canvas, right? Or you can send me a text message. I think I already got to text with a few students this week. So just send me a text. That's my phone number. Um, I will try to respond to you right away. But again, usually I am asleep by like 10 o'clock. So if you text me at 2 a.m., just wait until the next day, okay? I probably am not awake at 2 in the morning. Um, Yes, please, Shamsa. Nothing, so I was okay. just listening to you. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I saw you unmute yourself. I heard some sound. Okay, I'm going to go to the syllabus here. We've got 17 minutes. I could do it. I could do it. Any questions, though, about office hours or Zoom meetings or any of the stuff that I just talked about before we look at the syllabus? Any questions at all? No. Yes. Yes, please. So we are going to have class only on Thursday, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> you get you get one hour of your time back. And like I said, perfect world, you use that hour for this class. But if you use it for something else and you do homework at two in the morning, like many students do, because I know you have jobs and kids and other classes and everything, that's fine too. Okay. That's the idea is to make it as flexible as possible for all of you. I promise though, you will, you'll still get a lot of grammar, even though we only have one Zoom, I promise. Uh, any other questions? All right, let's look at the syllabus then, and, uh, and then I'll show you what's available for you in Canvas to do. So again, I'm gonna have, you can click the course syllabus link here anytime. I'm gonna open the document though. I'm going to read this really quickly just because it's sort of my philosophy, right? My true feelings about teaching. So it's important to me to read it for you so you understand how I teach and how I think about learning. So I'm just going to read this description really quickly and then, and then we'll look at the book stuff. But So I want to begin the semester by recognizing all of the history, strength, creativity, and knowledge that you already bring to this class. Take a minute to think, where do you come from? Who helped you become the person you are today? How did you get to where you are today? You carry all of these places, people, and experiences with you, and I want you to think about them if you ever doubt yourself this semester. This class is made up of a diverse group of human beings, and therefore we have many different ways of knowing the world. See Appendix A. I hope that we can use all these different types of knowledge as we read and write new things so that you can work toward our class learning goals. See Appendix B. This semester, I will ask you to try on a lot of new ideas and skills. See Appendix C. You might like some and really dislike others. That's great. I only ask that you imagine each new experience as a different way to understand and read the world. When we do this, we won't be reading and writing to just learn the one right answer. Instead, we'll be reading and writing to create our own shared meaning as a class. And in this way, we will be active creators of our own learning. When we do this, I believe that we are more likely to use our voices to reflect and act upon the world in order to make it a more beautiful 
place. This is what I think learning is for you guys. So I'm very glad that you are here to share this class with me. Um, now, how do we do that, right? We do that with the Zoom, we do that with office hours, and we do that with this book, Language Power. I already sent out in my first announcement to you all in Canvas, right? An announcement with information about uh, 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 the book. So here it says, welcome to ESLG 310. Uh, uh, some important information. Hopefully you all got here by clicking this link, but the link to buy the book is here in Amazon. And again, I'm sorry for uh, people, but I try to live in Spanish. So this is in Spanish. Forgive me for my non-Spanish speakers, uh, but this is the book. You can buy it used. You can buy an electronic copy. You can buy an old edition. You can buy it new. You can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it on Offer Up. You can buy it wherever you want to or need to, but I did not put it into the bookstore because, uh, well, I always say this, my mom, she taught me, don't say anything if it's something mean, so I won't say anything about the ARC bookstore. I will just say you will get it cheaper and faster if you buy it online. So that is my suggestion to you. Uh, and as you can see here, you can rent it. You can buy it used. There's lots of different ways to buy it. And I know that it's 40 bucks, um, but you guys, it is the best grammar textbook I have ever used. It is the only, in my opinion, one man's opinion, it is the only grammar textbook you will ever need for the rest of your life. It explains everything about how to write sentences in English and if you continue on to G320, and if you start doing reading and writing, and if you graduate from a degree, uh, a, a university in the United States, this book really teaches you how to use grammar uh, for college. It's not just fill in the blank quizzes. You know, it's a really good book. So I, I don't ask you to spend 40 bucks for no reason. I really believe in this book. And um, so if you if you ordered it or you're still waiting, though, or you're nervous, I just want to make sure again here, I'm going to go back to Canvas. So here where it says Professor Jeff's course materials. I have for you a PDF of the first three chapters. So if you're waiting or you need time or things are really slow here where it says language power tutorial PDFs, where it says LPT language power tutorial one. If you preview, uh, I have the first three chapters for free for you if you're waiting for the book or, or if you need some more time, okay? But I can't scan the whole book. That is not legal. But, uh, but for the first couple of weeks, do not worry about it, okay? That's here for you. Again, uh, where I'm going to minimize the preview, where it says Professor Jeff's course material. And I'll show you what else is on this page, but I've got more PDFs, videos, uh, uh, chapters from the textbook, and things to help you practice what we will talk about in class. Okay, that's what's on this Professor Jeff's course materials page. Any questions or ideas about the textbook? Cool. We got 10 minutes. I'm going fast. I'm going fast, everybody. So the last uh, thing that I really want to show you before we look at the assignments is you notice here we talked about the links, right? So here's the link to our Zoom meeting on Thursday. I will also, just like I did today, send out an announcement saying, hey, class is starting with the link. So if you need the link, you can get it there. Here's the syllabus. The last thing I want to show you under links is here where it says live support materials, right? I told you I record all the Zoom meetings. Well, how do you, oh, I need to change this. <laughs> this was from last semester, I'm sorry, everybody. You could see last semester's Zoom recordings. Today is January 20th, 2022. So let me show you what this will look like. PowerPoint presentation and Zoom recording. So after class ends, I, it takes the computer some time, but I will download the video, put it onto uh, YouTube so that you can have closed captioning if you need it. And I will put the link to the Zoom recording right here. I will also put the PowerPoint file. So everything we did together, right? This activity that we did together, all of these notes and all of the things that I type into the PowerPoint, these are here for you as well. So live support materials, that's the page you go to to download the PowerPoint and to watch the Zoom recording, okay? So 
by tomorrow morning, we'll see how late I can stay up tonight. Maybe tonight I will post the Zoom and the PowerPoint, but by tomorrow for sure. And again, when the Zoom and the PowerPoint are there for you, I will send out an announcement in Canvas saying, hey, it's ready, you're good to go. Um, any questions about the live support materials page? Cool. Nine minutes, we can do it. I'm just going to show you the assignments that are now in Canvas. We'll talk more about this next week. So the assignments that are in Canvas right now, I just published them today. I'm going to change to student view. Now, I will tell you, one assignment in Canvas does have a due date, and I will tell you why in just a moment here. But first, let's do the easy ones. Lesson one is name coach. Some of you already did this. But as I said, I want to learn your nickname or the name you want me to call you, and I want to learn how to say your name. So all you need to do, here are the instructions, right? Use the name coach tool to record your name like you want me to say it and pronounce it. If you have a nickname, record your nickname. For example, the name that my mom gave me is Jeffrey, but I like people to call me Jeff. So just, I would say, hey, hey, professor, my name's Jeff. You can call me Jeff, you know? So all you need to do is click over here on Name Coach. And then you'll see a button here. I can't do it because I'm the teacher. But uh, if I go back, you'll see a button that says Record Name, right? And then you can use your phone. You can use your computer. This should only take you about 10 seconds. Record your name. Just say, hi, Professor. My name is Mariam. That's it. You're done. <laughs> And 10 points. So that assignment is, is pretty, pretty fast, pretty easy. Um, questions about lesson one? No. Okay. Should be pretty easy. So lesson four and five, they, it says that it's a quiz, but this is not really a quiz. It's to make sure that you take some time to read the entire syllabus. I know that that's boring. So you get a reward, which is you get points. So when it says take the quiz, this is a pretty easy quiz, though. For example, how many Zoom meetings do we have each week? Yeah, one. Thank one. you. You one. got a point. Great. What day and time is our weekly Zoom meeting? It's Thursday, five Thursday, to six. Five. Thank you. Right. It's, it's, it's these kind of basic questions that I want to make sure you understand how the class is organized. OK, that's what this first quiz is. If you're not sure about an answer, watch this video recording or Read the syllabus. Everything to answer these questions is in the syllabus. Now, quiz, five, that's part one, right? Quiz five, I'm going to make you write a few sentences here, but I want to show you how to answer these questions. So notice here it says, read Appendix A in support of culture and language diversity, then copy and paste the sentence that you really like from the paragraph, then explain why you like the sentence you chose. Well, I want to show you in the syllabus, that's again this file we looked at here, the appendix starts on page three, here where it says appendix A, right? So to answer this question on the quiz, you just need to read this paragraph, choose a sentence that you like, copy and paste it into this text box, and then write one sentence saying why you liked it, right? And question number two says, Review the student hours information in the live support section in Appendix B. Oh, well, look at that. There's Appendix B. <laughs> and I think one of the other questions, question four says, look at the learning goals in Section C. Ah, well, here's Section C. Right? So uh, th this is to answer these five questions. You need to type 30 words for each question. To, and again, part of those words are just going to be copy and pasting my words, so this should go pretty fast, but you need to read the syllabus to answer these questions, okay? Now that's what lesson five is. Any questions about lesson five? Mm. Uh, Beatriz, if you're, uh, you're muted, Beatriz. Uh, this lesson five is like for next week or I am, is to be a class, Number five. I'm yeah, I mean, class. yeah, the lesson five just means which number. So instead of saying this is due in three days, remember most of the lessons in this class, Beatriz, will not have a due date. You can do them whenever you want. 
right? So, in, but again, I'll, I'll show you the last slide here. At the end of class, I'll usually say suggested before. So in a perfect oh. world, you can do this before next week. But okay. if things are crazy, if you get sick, whatever, right? You have some flexibility there, okay? Yeah, great question from Beatrice. Uh, anybody else? Questions about lesson five? Four minutes, I can do it. Okay, lesson three is a discussion. It's pretty simple. Uh, and for this discussion, let me say this right now. You don't need to do any reply. You don't need to answer to another classmate or anything, okay? There's, I'm not gonna have any strict rules here for this first one. So if you've taken a class online, you probably know too much about discussions. We will not have one every week, I promise. Uh, but I do want you to just answer this discussion post. Write about one part of English grammar that still confuses you and you want to learn more about. It's kind of like what we did at the beginning of class, right? It could be parts of speech, verb tenses, sentence structure, et cetera. Why do you want to improve your skills in this part of English grammar? Be specific. So this is not a test or a quiz. If you do this, you'll get 20 points, right? But I wanna see how much do you write? How much can you write? This is just kind of me um, learning a little bit about you. Next week, we'll talk about sort of the, the rules for the discussions, but this first one is just do it. Do it and you get the points, okay? We'll talk more about discussions next week. That, that was in discussions, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's and yeah, exactly. You could click on discussions. I always go to assignments is kind of the way I try to organize this class, but you can find it in a few different places in Canvas, Beatrice. Yeah. Yeah. So now the only assignment with a due date is this one, lesson two welcome letter. And it has a due date because it's a way for you to learn about me and a way for me to learn about you. It's like an introduction as I'll show you the instructions. So if you finish, you know, if, if you wait to do this assignment until week 10, that's not a very good time for an introduction, right? So as I say here, this assignment is a chance for me to learn a little bit about you and it will allow me to read some of your writing without you worrying about getting grades or corrections or feedback. We'll do that later, okay? I want you to write a letter to introduce yourself to me. Before you write my letter, before you write your letter, excuse me, please read my example letter below. And here's my letter. You can click preview or download wherever you want to do to read it. But this is just a chance for you to learn a little bit about me as a teacher. And the picture of me on the homepage is me and my uh, two brothers and my sister. In the introduction letter, you'll learn a little bit about me and my family and who I am and all that good stuff, right? Where I'm from and what I do. So first, before you do anything, read my letter, please. It will be your example, right? Then after you read my letter, it's time for you to write your own letter. In your letter, please answer the following questions. One, who are you? Two, how did you get to ARC? Three, what is a goal you have for this semester? And four, what is a long-term dream you have for your life? And the only thing that matters for this letter for points, for grades is the length. I want your letter to be at least 400 words. If you write 400 words, you get 10 points. If you write less than 400 words, you get zero points. So this is not about the grammar in your sentences. It's just, I'm gonna make you write a little bit, okay? And then after that, I'm asking you to practice some of this formatting stuff. So that means you use the example letter that I gave you to write in MLA formatting. This means Times New Roman font, size 12, double spaced. If you do not know what I'm talking about, you're like, Jeff, oh my goodness, what is MLA formatting? All you have to do is click this link that I have here for you. It is very short. Your work can feel. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I cannot tell you how much I hate commercials, you guys. They just make us dumber. Um, okay, this video will teach you exactly how to do MLA formatting. And notice it's two minutes long. It's very simple. When I say it's short, I'm not joking. So if you're going, Jeff, you told me to put my welcome letter in MLA formatting. I don't know what that is. Click this link, take two minutes and watch this video for how to set up MLA format in Word, okay? So again, I'm asking for you to finish this letter and submit it into Canvas. 
before class next week so that I can get to know you, so that I can learn a little bit about you. Um, now, I am even one minute over time. So what I'm going to do is stop sharing, stop the recording, and say goodbye to people who need to go. But if you do have questions or need anything, I'm going to stay extra time to, to answer those questions. I am so sorry I went one minute late, uh, but it was really good to meet all of you. And I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to stop recording.